Hello there and welcome back to a brand new video. Now, yesterday I did try out a different style of video, so be sure after you've watched this one to check that one out and let me know what you think about the style of recording. But of course, today's video, you've seen the title and thumbnail, is going to be rearranging this Star Wars minifigure stand and not only completing the stand because I forgot to put a few of the Lego plates on the right hand side, but also just making room for all these figures down here from the advent, from recent mocks that I have dismantled and also just making sure there's enough room for minifigures that come out this year as currently it is packed but there's I think two or three rows at the top of the display stand that are completely empty and really I should be making the most of my space so I am going to be messing around with my display stand but I'll do all that off camera and then I'll come back and show off the display finally finished after however many months it's been building it and also just run through how I organize them, groups of minifigures and what minifigures I'm expecting to get this year. So as you can see there are quite a few black plates missing from this right hand side of the unit and there's also some figures standing on top. I think we've got an astromech there hanging off, BB-8 and Dio right at the top out of the camera aren't even on a row properly. And we've got two of these rows at the top that are completely empty. Since we've not got anything post Rise of Skywalker, especially in Lego form yet, I will be just shifting these all up one or two layers and trying to give probably an extra row for the original trilogy because I have my 20th anniversary minifigures that don't at the minute have anywhere to go. I think they were on the other half of this line. But I'm trying to complete the collection and would like to keep some space for when I get the rest of Vader and Han. And if I do manage to pick up the Lando minifigure. And I'd also like to keep a layer of the prequel characters here right at the bottom. Because it is the 25th anniversary of the Phantom Menace. And I do think we could probably get a few more Phantom Menace characters. And of course we've even got a few of the wintry advent characters that I haven't added and the likelihood is they'll probably go where their actual in-universe appearance is. So as you can see, we start off down here with the Young Jedi challenges. And we also have some Old Republic figures right in this corner. I'll show them off better later. But then we gradually go through the story. And it's sort of in chronological order. As in these are the earlier Star Wars movies, games, TV shows. And as we go up, we approach the sequels at the top. You'll understand it much later, but I am going to finish plating off the unit and just reorganize the characters. I might time lapse it if there is something important I would like to say, but if not, then let's take a look at the display stand. And as you can see, my minifigures have been added to my display. It's looking a bit bulkier, a lot more filled than it did. You can see just to the side, just how many minifigures I have. And as you can see, there's not a single gap along the whole display, with the only exception being the spot where I've got my Han Torso, Vader Head, and my, at the minute, invisible 20 years of LEGO Star Wars Lando. All the other three minifigures are already in my collection, and I've even got one of the original Luke minifigures just to the left of them. In fact, that Luke just above him is actually a Luke from one of my very first LEGO Star Wars sets, or at least an early LEGO Star Wars set. Of course, it's a land speeder. We have had so many land speeders since, but I think we should probably start quite near the bottom. Of course, we've got the Adventure Yoda. In his young days, he would go traveling, so I've liked that right at the start. We've also got the Young Jedi Adventures figures, including my custom nubs, and a few Old Republic minifigures there. And then we move on to Phantom Menace, the row above it. And it even takes up some of the next row with that very worn and rusted 3PO next to the fully gold. That's with side of the leg printing and arm printing, if you are interested. Then we've got Attack of the Clones, of course, Captain Tarples from Episode 1. But we've got Padme, which is a custom next to a custom Zam Wessel. Of course, the custom 3PO with the droid body and Anakin and Obi-Wan from Episode 2. We've also got the Council and we're getting more into Clone Wars now. Of course, the Vaj, Palpatine, Asajj, Grievous. And then we've got the Kamen Owen. We've got a few more clone characters as we come along with Vaughn and Cody amongst all the other Clone Wars heroes and villains alike. 
especially towards this end. And then we move on to, I think it's episode three. At the top, of course, we've got the Wookiee Chief Tarful with Yoda sending him off. And then Order 66 with Keller and Beck. I'm not quite sure why the uh, Mandalore Obi-Wan is there. I feel like he should probably be a bit in with a crowd, but I guess there's no one else really, so they just have to fill the gap there. And then we've got the Bad Batch. Of course, if you haven't seen my video recreating five iconic scenes from the new trailer, do be sure to check it out. And our most recent acquisition being the Omega from the Advent Calendar last year, which is a very, very nice minifigure to be getting. We've then got a young Wookiee, Padawan Jedi, that did appear in Bad Batch, which is why he's there rather than in the Clone Wars, and it does use the Chewbacca head mould. The yellow droid from the Kenobi series, of course, young Luke there, who does also appear at the end of Rebels, which is why he's next to Ezra Bridger. Of course, we've got Cal Kestis from Fallen Order with BD sitting on his shoulder. Then we're on to Solo with a muddied Chewbacca Solo and the Kessel Mine Worker. Both of the last two are actually exclusive figures. I think they were gift with purchases or you could perhaps pick them up as poly bags at certain stores. But Chewie does actually use the body, arms and legs from the bear minifigure from the Muppets CMF. Which actually does look quite nice with that head mould. It's a shame we never got an exclusive muddied Chewie. We've then got Cassian Andor and Vader, of course, from Rogue One, and Andor then having his own series. And then that's where our 20 years of LEGO Star Wars minifigures will be. Once I've got the other three, hopefully this year, and I've got the T-16 minifigure just to cap off that row. We then move into A New Hope, of course, Land Speeder minifigures. We've got so many of them. I narrowed it down to the very first, my very first, and my latest Luke Skywalker minifigures. And then Kenobi, 3PO, Leia, Tarkin, of course, from the Death Star. Had to include a custom Tarkin. And there's actually a custom Yularen just down here next to Ahsoka. And then we have some Han and Luke Trooper outfits using the brand new Storm Trooper bodies. And Luke actually has custom arms, as do most of my Luke Skywalkers. You can see the Ceremony Luke right there, the Snow Speeder Luke. And the X-Wing Luke just over here. All use custom arms from Firestar, of course. Don't forget to use my code if you are interested. But we have a few of our heroes from the attack on the Death Star, the Trench Run. And then, of course, from the Celebration, actually a prototype Boba Fett Lego minifigure. Again, custom arms from Firestar just to complete the look. On to Empire Strikes Back, we had a bunch of our Hoth heroes at the front. And even the medical droid at the back. And then we move to Dagobah with Luke, Yoda and a muddied R2. And even Luke in his father's uniform. Which was a must make with all the Lukes and Vaders we've been getting. I've also included Lobot, Ugnall and the Cloud City car driver. Because I would like to get some more Cloud City figures. Especially a Lando to fit in there. The only Lando I have will be showing up later on. And it is a custom minifigure. But... Of course, the Bounty Hunters from the iconic scene from Empire Strikes Back, General Veers and Han Solo in Carbonite round off Empire Strikes Back. And on to Return of the Jedi with that very nice 40 years plaque. We have Luke with the brand new hairpiece, which does look really nice. Han, Chewie, Lando. This is the custom Lando I was talking about. Boba Fett in his grey outfit. A skiff guard. And they are all the ones from my skiff vehicle mock which i never really did a video about i just had so much to record last year i didn't even finish my endor speeder diorama mock which i will be working on in the next few weeks but we also have akbar at the end of course a hooded loop from the mandalorian just because i run out of space on the above shelves emperor palpatine and wicket and then we have a few christmas characters we have the Ewok, we have Vader, we have Palpatine, we even have Grogu and the Mandalorian to start off the Mandalorian series. Now, I don't think I'll go through all of these figures because as you can see, there is actually three rows of the Mandalorian and Boba minifigures. But you can see that middle row looks amazing with all their Mandalorian helmets, which really does look cool. And I'm afraid I have taken away Koska Reeves' custom minifigure. There just wasn't space for it, but I did remove the arms and once again, Firestar arms on 
this Bo-Katan Clone Wars minifigure, which does look really cool. Especially now we've got that new Mandoverse Bo-Katan minifigure. I'll definitely have to pick it up at some point. But then we move on to Book of Boba Fett. With these four minifigures on the left, we've got Ahsoka just above that with all of my customs. The Christmassy Poe Dameron in the corner, which kicks off the sequels. A row, in fact two rows, of Force Awakens minifigures. One row of Last Jedi and one row of Rise of Skywalker. I guess we've even got the flashback Luke and Leia right in the very corner, which technically is from Rise of Skywalker, but I really didn't know where to whack it. So there was a gap on The Last Jedi, I whacked it just after Snoke, and that completes my Lego Star Wars minifigure display. So please do let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. Drop a like if you did enjoy, and I'm afraid... There's actually no space for minifigures this year, so I will have to expand it. We do have the extra four studs on this old base plate. You can see just how great it is compared to the new one I got for Christmas. And that will give us about 20, just over 20 extra minifigures. So I might have to expand this at some point. And to be honest, by the time this year is up, we might even have to just expand it, take up the whole unit. But I have some big, big big designs for this base plate here we're going to make some giant mocks here in 2024 so stay tuned do subscribe once again we are trying to hit 700 subs in february and actually 100 subs a month sounds pretty cool so please do join us on this adventure once again thank you for watching today's video and may the bricks be with you always